very good afternoon. Okay. A very good evening to everyone here. Okay, um, I'm Desmond. Um, well, as you can see, I'm, I'm from SMU, Singapore Management University. So I am a researcher and I'm here to talk about machine learning. <laughs> yeah, okay. So uh, this is just a quick outline about uh, what I'm going to share today. Okay. Um, there's actually steps because uh, what I'm trying to share is actually uh, still in beta, so things are subject to change. Okay, so um, this is uh, today's presentation about what is machine learning without a machine. Okay, so uh, basically without a machine is like without an enterprise server that not everybody can afford to have it at home. Okay, so uh, just a quick overview about me. Okay, I spent a few years back in Australia working on some uh, government projects. Then I came back 2015. Uh, to wait, work with SMU and currently I'm succumbing to uh, a place called CASA where uh, I translate research artifacts into actual real world projects for the government sector. Okay, so uh, this is LUCK itself. Okay, where um, this is our, our four research uh, pillars where we are focusing in for smart nations. Okay, yeah. So uh, today we are more, most likely going to talk about smart consumption and healthy lifestyles and how machine learning can help us to achieve that. Okay, yeah. And personally, I'm, I'm currently working on a personalized uh, urban mobility and a smart consumption. So for the other two, is my colleagues that is working on it. Okay. So um, one of the important stuff in Singapore since last year, uh, National Day Rally, the Prime Minister actually have a war against diabetes. Okay, so uh, we are particularly worried about this, and this is from MOH, a statistic about it from last year's uh, facts and figures. And my parents is all uh, having some chronic uh, chronic illness, all these things. So diabetes is one of the key killer for guys and girls also. Okay, and all these things. And see, the thing is that uh, it, you want to keep track of your records of health. Uh, what you eat, calorie counting, if you're not doing exercises. Generally, uh, in the olden days, our dietitians will tell you to write a, a food diary and what you have eaten and calculate. It's quite tedious in a way. Okay? Um, as, as we uh, start to go towards a smart nation initiative stuff where we have a lot of our apps to help you keep track in your eatings, and your diet, your exercise behavior. So book recording is in the few, uh, in the past where we use mobile apps more. Okay. So um, <coughs> in research, we created something called Food AI. Okay. It took uh, us about a year to collect a lot of foods, all local foods in Singapore, and we work with HPB, where uh, the dietitian there will help us to actually annotate them every single food such as chicken rice, bakute, uh, roti prata where every single calories, all the dietary nutritional values and information is all being tagged. Okay. And uh, you can go to this website for AI uh, uh, you can actually request one API to put in your apps itself. You upload an image to the server it will immediately recognize what food is that. And in the near future, we will get uh, more information, like more metadata, like uh, the calories, the fat, the sugar, all these things. Okay. So uh, with this, this is a research technology. Okay. But how do we convert this into, uh, I won't say commercial, but public usage. Okay. So anybody use this app before? HDB's Healthy 365, okay? Yes. Okay, so, uh, it's actually powered, uh, one of the features, uh, one of the segments inside is pow powered by Food AI. Yeah. AI. If you look at this orange dot, the camera, if you take a photo, it will immediately recognize uh, the food that you just took. Okay, it's all through uh, a lot of um, deep learning and machine learning from our back end. Yeah, and the process is quite, tedious from time to time yeah so 
first, uh, we spent a year collecting mobile phones pictures. We Google image and crawl everything. Recently, we, uh, we created a new auto crawler to crawl the image from Instagram, publicly available Instagram, Google images, everything uh, for a year. We currently have about, I must say, um, about 2,000 or 1,000 uh, food items in Singapore, local food only, okay, local food, okay, yeah. Um, we also have problems like, uh, we have new foods coming in like mala xiang guo, okay. Uh, we can't, can, we cannot really annotate them because uh, the, it's quite a randomized picking or typing, yeah. Okay, it's quite difficult, but we are trying to solve the problem. Uh, also, another thing, Singapore we have they si, they o, they ping, all these things that all looks very similar, and sometimes the calorie and nut nutritional value is really different. So we can only try to group them in group and give a general. Uh, output and the uh, values itself is just for instructional okay so if you look at it on uh, the second one is food image recognitions then we analyze them then of that healthy dining applications so with full ai you can actually use this for your apps if you want to okay it's all it's a currently tested and proven stuff where uh, it's working like we're, every day we are collecting about 3000 images from users on hpv apps okay yeah, so uh, with that, we need a very powerful machines and back-end infrastructures. Okay, um, this is an infrastructure from LUC, which is my parent uh, research center. Uh, we currently have 80 servers, and we are one of the first institutions in, in Asia to have a NVIDIA DGX server. Okay, um, we, we recently current, uh, acquired two additional ones. Uh, Tesla V100, I think, is way more powerful that we are running on two specific uh, research. Yeah. And generally, when we do demos, we use this GPU server uh, just to run the demo. And obviously, we also do some uh, search data mining with Elasticsearch cluster. Okay. Yeah. And just to share, this is how the system architecture looks like. Uh, for full AI, okay, we have a front end, back end, and an offline model. Okay, where after we train the model from the back end, and we work. Okay, we annotate all these things. Okay, um, you guys can see right. Okay, <clears throat> so this is a traditional machine learning and deep learning model. Okay, where you have front end, back end, and offline. So one needs to think about it, like how. If you can do something, if your phone can do vision recognition and all the nutritional values, checking all these things on the front end only, without any data, without trans transferring information to the back end and back and forth. Sometimes it takes take quite a while. Like recently, um, the new HPV app that came out, we upload an image to the HPV server. It took about 10 seconds to get back the image recognitions because of the server issues they're upgrading hardening it due to the certain data leaks issues, okay? So, this comes to create NML and core ML. Okay, uh, this year, Apple WWDC conference uh, actually provide a very good insight on create ML where you can actually create your own machine learning model without an enterprise server, okay? Just by using your own Mac. Obviously, uh, you need to up, upgrade the Mac to the latest uh, Mojave uh, operating system and iOS 12 because the operating system is actually comes with their own machine learning packages. So if, if you're using iOS 11 or using the older uh, high, higher Sierra, then sorry, you can't. But it's easy to download it and try out. Okay? Uh, just a quick recap okay, on CoreML itself. Okay, CoreML was uh, announced last year, and this year we have CoreML 2. Okay, this is a very easy, uh, simple way to sort of like uh, integrate a train model into your apps. Like, uh, for example, if you're using an iPhone, obviously, your photo library already come trained with uh, image recognition of your face, 
if you look at it, you can actually they will actually recommend you that okay, this is this you and that, and you annotate yourself, and from there, it actually allows you to tag, and as more pictures comes in, you will automatically tag it for you. Yeah, this is their own visions. Yeah, so if you look at it, your app vision, natural language processing, and gameplays, all these things. CoreML is the inventory to help uh, process all these things through your Mac or your phone processor. My first computer was 400 megahertz, I think. Yeah, but your our iPhone now is about 1 gig, dual core or quad core, it depends on which phone you're using. So they are definitely powerful enough to run all this, process, all this processing while you're not using the phone. When your phone is plugged in, you run at back end. Okay. GraalML, this is the very interesting part that I I think this year, if you happen to attend DubDub, this is the key takeaway from the whole DubDub. Okay. This creates a very interesting interest to the whole uh, industry, especially the developers. Like, you can do a lot of things with machine learning, with GraalML, where you can create your own libraries. Okay, yeah. Just this. This is just the three uh, simple thing. Okay, to run a default machine learning image classification, you only need three lines of codes on the Xcode, and everything will be fine. Okay, if you have a super powerful MacBook with a GPU, you will you will run by by the GPU itself. Okay, you you can actually customize what you want. Okay, yeah, but Machine learning is not for everything. Okay. All, all you need to start is a problem. Do you, but you have to ask yourself a question here is that, do you really need machine learning on your app? Yeah, okay. If you, want, you are trying to solve a problem that can, can be solved with machine learning, then go for it. But if you think that you want to try it out, CreateML is also a very easy way to do it. I myself is not a machine learning engineer by training. I'm a network engineer. I train myself for iOS, and recently I've been testing out this because uh, full AI is only on the back end trans transfer. So we are looking at using CreateML to solve a problem on the front end. Our data model is about three gig. Okay, it's not possible to load it front end into our apps. Yeah, but. We tested a small subset of our data model, just five different food items. That's 18 kilobytes. Yeah, but they are doing the same thing, almost the same, because I, I didn't train it well enough. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I get this image from Apple, so it's quite easy to um, explain from their perspective. Okay, you have a problem, but to solve a problem, you need to collect a lot of data. And with data, you need to train them to make sure that the machine knows what is the outcome and what you want, what, what you're trying to achieve. But after training your data, obviously you need to make sure your data is correct and doing what as you expect it to perform. That's how you evaluate them. And subsequently, you export it as a core ML model and plug it in to your app. Okay. Yeah. Currently, uh, GraalML only have these three functions, as far as I understand. They are not really robust enough as compared to other machine learning languages, okay, like TensorFlow, all these things. Okay. So, um, we will talk about images today because it's the easiest and the most fun one at this moment. Okay. Who, who would have thought that by looking at this image and through CoreML, it will return chicken rice? Okay. This is how the model works. And with 18 kilobytes, it's really small as compared to 3 gig of data model. Okay, so uh, let's quickly do a quick demo. Okay, shall we? Okay. Okay, as I said, um, this is just the three lines that you need. Okay. Um, let me check it. Let's see. Okay. Okay. Can you guess? Um, let me get bigger. Okay. Let's get a big. 
Is it better? Okay, so um, f the first line obviously you need to uh, import the create ML UI. Okay, uh, beside the UI machine learning, you can actually use uh, terminals or codes. But for demonstration purposes, uh, UI is easier, okay? Um, it just speaks a million words. So you build a builder, classify EMU builder, and show in live view. So, so this is a live view, okay? And if you, if you realize that it says drop images to begin training, okay. But obviously, uh, this is the training part. Where is the data? Okay. Okay. Um, in view of time constraints, uh, I actually just uh, drag out uh, a few uh, food items. Um, yeah. Yeah, from our uh, food AI depository. So we have Bakute. Uh, black carrot cake, chicken rice, okay, uh, white carrot cake, and if you realize there's two things here, we have one time shrimp noodles, okay, um, dried noodles, uh, shrimp dumplings, and we have a uh, tom yum curry rice, that's uh, like laksa curry noodles, tom yum noodle soup, okay. Why are they categorized to this? It's because that um, they all look really, really similar, <laughs> okay, and they are all generally clustered into a same genre of food items, curry noodle soups, okay, like laksa. Okay, obviously, uh, data collection is really a tedious part, okay. Why I say so is like, if you look at it, you have to annotate them in a list, okay. This is just bakute, okay, yeah. We have thousands of images that uh, we actually uh, crawl from the net and annotate them to make it this way. And you can always do a uh, certain pre-processing, um, like uh, whitewash them, um, rotate left and right to make it uh, more recognizable by the, the app itself and the model. Okay, so what I need to do, so come here. There's a few uh, uh, pre-processing procedure. You can do iterations, training data, validation, and some augmentations like crop, rotate, blur, expose, all these things. Adding additional steps uh, costs uh, more processing time and power. So we just do the default one, then iterations. Okay, okay so you find the training data. You okay, just select the main folder. Once you annotate them, okay, like you, if you have a few thousand, you just select them and just open it. Okay. Okay, that's it. Okay, and you just train it. <coughs> okay. You do it by, by itself. Uh, you don't need to write any Python codes or anything. Okay, it will tell you what, how, how many images has, have processed. Okay. Uh, it took about three minutes to five minutes to process everything. Okay, um, my image library currently is only have two thousand images. So, and I'm using a quad core, uh, thirteen inch MacBook Pro. Yeah. Okay. I, I tried. Uh, I tried the older version, a MacBook Air, and MacBook Air. Um, it take about two times slower. <laughs> so it's about fifteen minutes. Yeah. Okay. Maybe today is faster, it's like, you know, it's like about 400 image already. Yeah, it's less than a minute. Okay, because we, we are doing the quickest one, the 10 iterations. Yeah. Can I ask how you annotate them? Uh, we actually hire interns and part-timers. <laughs> we spend a year, we spend about 300 grand <laughs> to ask them to every day just search. You only have one job. Go to Google Image, you find all the chicken rice images. Yeah, uh, it's government funding, okay, but uh, in order to make it more realistic, we really have to do the ground truth, which is asking people to really find the images. Nothing beats human, right? Yes. So you're feeding the annotations and the images together? Yes. Oh. Yeah, so you but cluster... You just, you just drag over the... you just select the folders. Yes, you select the folders and... Um, create ML is really smart enough to know that you already categorize them. So they, level. Yes. 
You can actually categorize them in a single layer with the name, or you can categorize it in the subfolders. So they know this one category each. Okay? Yeah, we're almost there, we're almost there. Yeah. What happens if the same image falls into multiple folders? Well, I guess we have some, some problem with the machine learning. <laughs> okay. So you try not to, in a way. Because uh, if, let's say you have chicken rice, um, things will happen. That is why there's a training module coming up soon. Okay? Yeah, we are halfway there. Okay, it's two minutes, 1,250 images. Yeah. What does the 10 iterations like? The difference between the 9 iteration and 10? Okay, so the more iteration it runs, it recognizes more features per images. This is a layman's term to say. It's not really the, the actual thing. Okay, so um, how, how it works is that uh, the more you run, the more iteration to compare to each other, then it takes longer time to, to process. Yeah. Okay. Even for the image, right? For yeah. this image that we filter on and we are filter, will it affect the result? Yes. Because if you have filter, the imagine that um, the app itself is an eye, is a is a is a pair of eyes. Okay, so the more images that the app seen in different matters with annotated uh, wording, the truth itself, the better they can guesstimate the image. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the same filter is like the image feels like a bit more yellowy. Yes, yes. Uh, white wash is like basically just black and white. All this thing. So what is running? Uh, it, because of time, I actually remove uh, whatever uh, the augmentations. So if you look at it, we have crops that looks like this. Okay, it's just half pictures to recognize. Okay, and like chicken rice, we have augmentations and make it very the color such as this one. All this thing. Okay, like this give you a, a lot of uh, funny 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 stuff to make it uh, recognize like this one we actually rotate it in a way so it's all done um, through code lah. okay right, all this thing yeah okay so hopefully it's done okay we're almost there uh, sorry when you say it's done through the code means okay we, 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 we create a, a script to do all this pre-processing <laughs> and it's not possible to hire someone to do a few thousand or hundreds of thousands of images to rotate or crop all these things. Yeah. So, so yes. based on your image, what would you say that acceptable? Like, uh, uh, for this demo, I think 50% is acceptable. <laughs> yeah, but if you're looking at uh, a research research uh, context, usually 80% and above. Yeah, we have a few papers, you can look it up. Yeah, by my colleague Stephen Hoy. Yeah. So he's a, a principal investigator in this project. Okay. Yeah, we're almost there. Another thing is, just now you drop, you categorize in a folder, and then you drop the entire yes. folder, right? Yeah. So, so the folder, the folder, folder form can only recognize those under that category, or it can also be combined with another model. Different yeah, different level. Like say, uh, training is the main, the training folder. So we have bakut teh, carrot cakes, chicken rice, laksa, wonton mee, and white carrot cakes. So these are the category that you want to identify. Okay. Can you identify beyond that? What happens to those out of the, 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 the subfolders? Okay. So you, you see the accuracy is not very high today because it's 10 iteration, it's 78. Okay. So, um, after that, if you look at here, it says drop images to begin testing. So, in machine learning, let's say you have a thousand images, you should do, uh, the, the best practice that uh, generally is 80, 20. So, let's say you will take 800 images for training purposes, and another 20%, which is 200 images that people that haven't seen before, Oh, sorry, the machine they haven't seen before to let it train and test it out and see how, how good is your classifier. Is that the same for text based? Um, I'm not really a text person. I can't really answer you that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, for text, we generally try to put in certain 
keywords in between wording and see how it works. Yeah. So after the train, you, you should select the test folder and drag it in. Okay, you can drag it in or you can just do the same thing as what I did, uh, just select the folder. Okay. Okay. This will be faster because this uh, image is smaller. Okay. One, one thing cool about uh, this uh, Apple default factory uh, image classifier here is that you, you will see the image running that you, it gives you a sense that it's processing and together with the logs below. Okay. <coughs> so that is why you see the training is 78%, the validation of it is 78 So evaluation should be around there or lower or sometimes higher. Okay, because uh, we are running only 10 iterations, it's faster. Okay, if you run one iteration, obviously the matching and the training, will, the percentage will drop even further. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, uh, what's your question again? Okay, so let's say for, it's, it's all food. Let's say if I put a photo of a drink inside, it will keep the outcome. They will try to match whatever categories inside. Obviously, you can also add another thing is that not found. Then it will show that this or is. Or maybe it'll be like last time ten percent something. Like that. Yeah, it will show the highest possible. Okay. But uh, there's another way that you can always write a logic to say that this is not this human, this non-human, or this inanimated, or this thing. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, we are almost done. Yeah. So you find that the image quality effects? Yes, it does. It does actually. It does. Um. The, the, if you get a very super uh, low res images, it actually have difficulty to try to annotate them because uh, they go down to the low level to do it. So what's the recommended? I guess I guess anything bigger than ten twenty four will be okay. Yeah, yeah, because uh, you don't actually need a good camera to uh, take a high res photo. Uh, say, hey. Yeah. So this learn this need to teach you that uh, machine learning you need to be patient. The last time we ran a whole subset model, I think it took three days on on the DGX. <laughs> I I think we have like three million <laughs> or four million images and run running hundred and twenty iterations. Okay, done. Okay, so uh the validation is seventy six percent. So if you look at here, it actually gives categorize the classes for you. Okay. Uh, precision. What carrot cake is quite bad. <laughs> okay. So the highest is bakute, black carrot cakes, and chicken rice, laksa, all these things. Okay. And see they will they will actually show uh, show what is being uh, predicted and whether is it true or not. Okay like this one they predicted as uh white carrot cake but actually it's chicken rice because this is chicken rice okay so you look at it so uh, it, create ML still have its flaws but it's easy if you want to do basic machine learning okay. you don't need to really code code it but this one it predicted day, but it's actually chicken rice so on and so forth okay so next thing once it's done it give you something called they give you something to let you save it okay and you should save it somewhere if you want to. Uh, I already saved one that I trained it previously, so the accuracy will be higher. Okay. Which is here. Okay. Okay. And we have a coding code base here. Um, where's my code base? Yes. Okay. So basically, you just do a drag and drop. Okay. Because uh, one, one thing about. Uh, the new X code and this machine learning model is that the moment you drag it in, it will actually create all the necessary files and codes for you, so you can just use it. Okay, and this this is all the output. Yeah, uh, I will I will actually open source this uh this demo so they can test it out yourself. Okay, yeah. Use the images. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. I can't give you the images, but I can give you the model. Okay. Because uh, the images, although it's public domain, but uh, we copyright the, the stuff. Okay, so uh, let me see. Uh, okay, there's there's two interesting part on machine learning. The interesting part will be vision. Okay, I'll just quickly go go through the the code itself. 
Okay, we have to import uh, audio visual kit, so we're gonna do a real life, real time uh, machine learning to detect, like over open CV to know what is this food. Okay, we need vision so that we, they can actually look at it. Image, so we can do the image picker and taking of photos. Okay, yeah. So this is the main classifying models where you do all the classifications, and this is the output from the real time uh, cap capturing. Okay, and we update the class classifications uh, with the wording, all this thing. Okay, and this is a uh, main processing. Okay, yeah, and we find the first object which give me the highest accuracy. Okay, uh, I'm gonna quickly do it so that uh, yeah, yeah. Purpose I purposely pick an uh, iPhone 10 because uh, it's I think it's support uh, 4K resolutions so if you happen to have one you can actually try it out yourself um, because in here you are actually allow a 4k resolution to capture the image in high qualities okay so let's run it some technical difficulties. There's no Wi-Fi here. <laughs> Quickly do do a quick demo. Um, where is my food? Yeah. Okay. So um, say we we'll do a real time uh, recognitions. So we choose any chicken rice here. Okay. Um, that's good. Maybe this one. Okay. Let's see. What do I get? Okay. So uh, we have to run real time with green meat chicken rice. Yeah. So uh, this is a good way to play if you want to. Like um, they actually recognize it in a way, but this might not. Yeah. Just like what Bo say that. What if we give you something else? You recognize something else. It looks like curry noodles, tom yum noodles. Yeah. So try its best. Yeah, you'll try its best to try to match whatever. Obviously, you can do something that is not found if you want to. So, say uh, this one. It's definitely chicken rice, okay? <laughs> yeah, okay. So, like, babute. This might not work, but anyway, let's try. Okay. So, it's confused whether it's chicken rice, dumplings, 
Oh, Bak Kut Teh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the dessert is Bak Kut Teh or chicken rice. Yeah. So if you train more, then you will get more information. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, coming back. Okay. Uh, due to time. Okay. So what's next? It's like um this. This is a very basic uh, create ML demo, all these things. So, if you want to test it out, there's a lot of tutorials and free data set, free food data set online that you can download and use it and try it out yourself. Yeah, and mix and match and see. Even Apple itself actually create a data set to try. So, yeah. And I always like to say this, okay? Main set are meant to make, okay? But it's what you do that makes a difference next time. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll take question later on because I, I'm running a bit late on my time. Okay, thank you so much.